All right, we're gonna do, this is Fat Bee Man, and we're at one of my out yards, and we're gonna do what I call checkerboarding. This hive is in a single, and I'm getting ready to checkerboard it. And my best tip is put a little smoke, not a lot, right down the edge here, down the edge here, and wait a minute or so, let the bees and the queen, if she's on that outside frame, she's gonna move to the middle. And now you run less risk to kill that queen. And then run them all over to one side so you have room to work. Get them to one side. And then you can pull your frame up. Instead of sticking this hive tool here, stick it right at the edge here where you don't crack off those end bars. Then put a little bit of smoke. Now this is early a.m. morning. It's probably about 9, 30, 10 o'clock. And it's cool out here, so I'm not smoking the heck out of these bees. Uh, you want to use as little smoke as possible. Now what we're checking for is we're looking for some cells. I'm going to try to make uh, a few extra splits here. Now this hive here is ready to, to swarm. See this whole hive has basically got uh, drone comb in here. This hive might have already uh, split one time. Alright, take and pull a couple of those frames out and then just lean them up inside that box there where we have some room. Set this one in here like so. Now, when I put this box on top of this box, all that drone, when it hatches out, instead of throwing that wax away, they'll put honey in there. And then I'll cut the honey out, and then I'll put more foundation back in there. The bees are doing what they normally do. When they get crowded, they just make a swarm cell. All right, now that's, now you see you got a good pattern here. This is all workers all the way here. So there's nothing really wrong with the queen. It's just, you got to get in here. When the bees get full, they do what's natural. They're going to multiply. So they subdivide. All right, we got one good frame here. No, no swarm cells. All right, Tommy, you want to hand me an empty frame? Thank you. All right, I'm going to take this one out. And I'm gonna put this one back. You hold on to that one, Tommy. Always good to have extra pair of hands. All right, now let's look at this one here. You have to go through this hive and examine everything. Now I see there's a false cell here, a false cell here. See, it's very bulbulous. It's rounded here. It's a false cell. It's not a real true swarm cell. But I'd almost guarantee this hive would be swarming within about a week at least. It's surprising there's no queen cells in here. All right, we still got this is another good frame. All right, I'm gonna throw an extra here. Put this here. Let's throw this over here. Get that extra. Frame. Now what I'm doing is every other frame, I'm going to put a new piece of foundation in. That's going to give them plenty of room. And with the honey flow, this hive needs to be checked again probably in seven to nine days because they're going to have all that filled up. I don't see no swarm cells. Now, you see the amount of smoke I'm using? I'm not smoking. I'm not barbecuing bees. And when I see billows of smoke coming up, something just not right. All right, we're going to put this one over here. Every other frame is new foundation. Foundation we make ourselves, so we don't buy it on stuff. See, I'm doubling my area here as far as the bees covering. See, there's your, there's your indication of swarming. That corner has got the drone comb in it. As cool as it is, I'm putting my hands right on them bees. Okay. No swarm cells yet. We're still in good shape. Put this back together. Get the next frame out. I know there's a lot of people that watch my videos and that. And if they're seeing something, they want to have more explained to them. All they have to do is email me or get a hold of me and we'll try to help them out because we need more beekeepers that know what they're doing instead of getting in here pondering away and just raising havoc all right let's put 
this one right here. We're doing a complete inspection in this hive and we're going to be done in less than five minutes and we're actually looking for our swarm cells. Look, there's where it's starting a swarm cell. Just starting. Now this is a frame that should be in the top because those cells are not developed and these all these drones here as they hatch they'll replace them with honey. So let's just we'll just reverse one of these up here. Take this one. Oh look at that. We got the wrong frame in there. Oh, what are we gonna do? You hear the change? Like a slot machine? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tom, if you go into the trunk and get another deep box out and look and see if I got a couple extra frames. Or you can go inside the car and bring one of those nuke boxes. I've got a frame in there that we can use. You hear the roar? Now they're starting to roar a little bit. That's because they got the queen over here. I didn't see her, but I can hear. All right, let's see if we got a. Open that up and tell. Let's see if we got a frame we can use. There's one on the side. Did you pick one that didn't have a frame in it? Yeah, you got one that don't have no wax in it. Okay. I'll Grab another one. Box. No, I would use one of mine. I don't want to swap out all my stuff with your stuff. You're going to need plenty of it. See this one is not roaring as much as that. That's what. That's one way you can tell where the queen is. When I make a split, I don't even look for the queens. Or you can pull one of those deep ones out in the trunk, and I know there's some in there. Now what I like to do is center my frames when I'm done with my uh, inspection. All right, Tommy, you want to grab that box and put it right on top. That's good. All right, now get the feeder and put the feeder on. Before you put the feeder on, look underneath the bottom of the feeder just to double check, make sure you don't have a queen on her. Look, look at the bottom. All right, look at the amount of bees you got here. Uh -huh. Let's check and see if you got a queen. They're kind of quiet. Now, you, you see where I've got this recess down? That's because if I put it on here and it was flush, if I happen to miss and I got a queen here and I set it on there and it's flush, I could scorch that queen. But I've got clearance there, so I'm not going to worry too much. I'm going to set it down nice and easy. And I'm going to move it back and forth to get those bees out of the way. And anytime you set your box up, kind of feel the corners, make sure it's squared up. All right, let's take this. we got some bees on it and we'll take it around the front and just bump it on the ground. They'll fly up. Now I've got a feeder or something that's warped here, so if you would take that the cement block and put it up caddy corner here. Set it the way it was on the ground. There you go. Alright, now if you put cement blocks on top of your box, bring it forward somewhere. Let's just turn it straight this way. If you take this block, no, turn, turn your end around that way. No, lift it up. Lift it up. All right, turn it this way. Now, if you set your cement block this way, there's no support because you got your B box here, you got a B box here, and the weight of that block will take your plywood and it'll bow it. But now, if you pick it up and put it on an angle like this, you're resting on the sides here and it won't bow your plywood. Now, let's put it up this way. Hold your hand on the block. 
Okay. And lift it up. All right, just turn it sideways. And then, like a little more. All right, now check your feeder. You, you moved off a little bit. Now, if you set it that way, it'll always keep your box flat. And if you've got a box that's cocked, this will flatten it out, the moisture in the air. 